Hello, my name is Craig Steinloss. I'm an associate professor of epidemiology here at UC Berkeley, and I've been a member of the Superfund program for about the last 12 years. And I'm going to talk about arsenic and our study in northern Chile on the association between arsenic and cancer. Millions of people worldwide are exposed to arsenic through a variety of different sources, food, air, occupationally, but by far the biggest route of exposure is arsenic-contaminated drinking water. We're doing a study in northern Chile where we're looking at some of the effects of those exposures. And today I'm going to present some of the results that we found from this study. Uh, so northern Chile is a very interesting and advantageous place to study arsenic exposure for a couple of reasons. Number one is because there's excellent data on past exposure. There's very, it's the driest habitable place on Earth and there's very few individual water sources. That's different from some other areas worldwide where there can be thousands of different water sources in a particular area. Northern Chile is different. There's very few water sources. The other advantage is we have arsenic exposure levels in all those water sources for about the last 40 years or more. So we simply need to know where people have lived, and then we'll have a good idea of what their arsenic exposure was for a long history of time, for over their lifetimes. So I'm going to show you some of our results that we have just sort of published. This is one result where we looked at, there was a very distinctive period of high exposure in the largest town in the area called Antofagasta, approximately 30 or 40 years ago. In 1958, they diverted a large river uh, to the city of Antofagasta to use for drinking. And that large river had high concentrations of arsenic. In 1970, they installed a treatment plant to get rid of that arsenic, but there was this distinct exposure period from 1958 to 1970. We went in there and looked at cancer rates now, in other words, from 2008 to 2010. And what we found was very high rates of lung cancer and very high rates of bladder cancer. As you can see on this slide, we saw that lung cancer rates what we call the odds ratio. That's basically the rate of, basically it's the rate of cancer in people exposed to arsenic divided by the rate of cancer in people unexposed to arsenic. And we found that lung cancer was four times higher in those people that had that high arsenic exposure. And bladder cancer rates were almost seven times higher in people that had the high arsenic exposure. These results are important, we think, because lung and bladder cancer are among the most common causes of common cancers in not only Chile, but also the United States and worldwide. And lung cancer is one of the leading causes of cancer mortality worldwide. So we found that these rates were high, again, almost 40 years after high exposure. Now this is important because there's areas throughout the world that still have high arsenic exposure, Bangladesh, West Bengal, even here in the United States. And I think it's important that these areas know that even once they stop their high exposure, they're still going to have to deal with these high cancer rates up to 40 years after they stop the exposures. I think that kind of highlights the importance of stopping the exposures as soon as possible. This next slide, one of the other things we looked at was not only bladder cancer and lung cancer, but we also looked at kidney cancer. There were some other previous studies that had found associations between arsenic exposure and kidney cancer, but none of them had looked at the specific types of kidney cancer, and the risks that they identified were fairly low. We looked at the specific types. In other words, we looked at renal cell cancers, which are the most common, and the second most common is transitional cell cancers. When we found that when we just looked at the transitional cell cancers, as you can see on the far right, the odds ratio, which is again is the risk in people exposed to arsenic divided by the risk in unexposed people, was almost 18 times higher. Again, this had never been found before, so we were the first ones to identify it. Another thing that we were able to look at is we looked at people that were born in the high exposure period and people that were born before the high exposure period. So you can look at this chart and over on the right hand side you can see the high exposure period is marked 1958 to 1970. And the dots are the odds ratios, again the risk of people with the high arsenic exposure. And can, you can see that people that were born in the high exposure period, their odds ratios for having lung cancer were almost six times higher than people that were unexposed. And if you were born before the high exposure exposure period, those are the dots to the other side of that dotted line, you can see that the odds ratios are much lower. So I think the important message from this slide is that if you have a high arsenic exposure, either as a fetus or as a very young child, you can potentially have very high relative risks or risks of lung cancer. This just shows it a different way. And you can see on the bottom part of the slide, it shows the age 
when the arsenic exposure occurred. And you can see in utero, which means exposures of fetus, you can see that was associated with a very high odds ratio, higher than if you were ex first exposed later in life, over on the left-hand side of the slides, age zero to 10, age 10 to 20, or over age 20, are associated with lower lung cancer relative risk or odds ratios. So again, I think what this signifies is that people that are exposed early in life, that can cause significantly increased cancer risk later in life as an adult. Another interesting finding that we've seen in, in northern Chile is we looked at the, the uh, risks of not only people exposed to arsenic, but what if you're exposed to arsenic and something else? These are never smokers, people that never smoke, that were exposed to arsenic, but also secondhand smoke as a child. And you can see on the left-hand side of the slide, it's the increased risk in people that did not have any arsenic exposure and did not have any secondhand tobacco smoke exposure. We'll set their odds ratios or excess odds at zero. And then on the next column over, we have people that were exposed to arsenic but didn't have any secondhand tobacco smoke. Secondhand tobacco smoke is signified here as it's SHS. And you can see they, people with high arsenic had a 42% excess odds of getting lung cancer. The next column over shows people that were exposed to secondhand tobacco smoke but didn't have high arsenic exposure. And they had about the same increase in odds or risk of lung cancer, about 44%. And then the final column way over the right are people exposed to secondhand tobacco smoke, again as a child, and high arsenic exposure. And you can see their excess odds, 181%. It's more than additive. In other words, it's more than the 42% from the high arsenic exposure plus the 44% from the secondhand tobacco smoke added together. So we call that a synergistic relationship. So we identified in that, uh, that in our study subjects in Chile. We also found similar synergistic relationships with arsenic and certain occupational exposures like asbestos, silica, wood dust exposure. Another thing we've been looking at is not only cancer, but also effects on the lung. For some reason, and we're not exactly sure why, arsenic really seems to affect the lungs. The human lung seems to be especially susceptible to the toxic effects of arsenic. So what we did was we went into Chile, and we did a small preliminary study where we looked at people's lung function, and we looked at two groups. One group of people were exposed to arsenic in early life, and they were now 40 or 50 years old, and another group, same age, but they didn't have the early life arsenic exposure. And what we found, as you can see on the left-hand side of this slide for childhood arsenic exposure, we found an 8% decrease in lung function in those people with early life or childhood arsenic exposure. And I think that's important because it's a similar level of decrease that you would see in somebody who smokes. In other words, smokers have about an eight to 10% decrease in their lung function. And again, we saw about the same effect for arsenic exposure. And again, the effect we found is even greater than what has been shown for, this is environmental tobacco smoke or secondhand tobacco smoke, uh, and also for air pollution, where the effects were only about 2%. We found effect sizes for arsenic that were about 8% higher. So nobody has really shown this before. So those are some of the results we have from Chile. We're working on a whole bunch of new analyses. Um, for example, we're looking at arsenic and diabetes and certain windows of susceptibility. In other words, if you have diabetes as an adult, it appears that it's linked to arsenic exposure. And what we're seeing in our preliminary data, it appears that the arsenic exposure when you're in utero or fetus seems to be the most significant risk factor, as opposed to arsenic exposure later in life. We're also looking at the effects of lower exposures. Mo a lot of the exposures in Chile are fairly high. Exposures in the United States are, are lower for the most part. So we're looking at the effects of lower exposures. And we do see some preliminary evidence that there's association between these lower exposures and the increased risk of cancer. We're also looking at various uh, susceptibility factors like genetics or other factors like diet, occupational exposures that may also increase your risk um, of arsenic-related disease. Okay, so I just want to acknowledge some of our funding sources. Uh, primarily, the National Institutes of Environmental Health Sciences has funded our studies. And I want to acknowledge uh, some of the key collaborators, Dr. Alan Smith on the top slide, has been my mentor for the last 15 years. And Dr. Caterina Ferreccio is our Chile PI and in Chile, and she has been the one to organize this, in, in what I would call an incredible infrastructure that we've had in, in Chile. And we couldn't have done any of this without her.
and then some of our other collaborators, including members of the UC uh, Berkeley Superfund Research Program, like Dr. Uh, Martin Smith, and again, our Chile collaborators, and other U.S. collaborators we have from the University of Washington, from NCI, UCSF, and uh, California EPA, or WEHA. So that concludes my presentation on arsenic exposure and our study in northern Chile. Um, again, millions of people worldwide are exposed to arsenic. Arsenic can cause some major health effects, including cancer and heart disease, diabetes, and other health effects. And we feel that northern Chile is probably the best place in the world to answer some of the remaining questions on susceptibility, cancer risks, and other factors. Thank you.